So today's video, we're going to be going over DaVinci Resolve 17's brand new video collages slash split screen effect. And let me tell you, it's powerful. Let's get started. So split screening in DaVinci Resolve 17. So how exactly does it work? Well, let's go through it together. So it's fairly simple, but also a little bit complicated at the same time. So I'll explain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by dragging in a clip into my timeline. So this is the clip that we're going to use. And then we're going to go to our effects. We're going to open up our effects library. We're going to scroll down and we're going to go to video collage. And I'm going to drag it onto my clip. And straight away, you will see after it loads, we have this. So what exactly is happening here? Let me explain. From what I can understand, what it seems to be doing is this video collage effect is essentially a mask, which enables you to put other video footage, images, or you name it in between the layers of this mask. And these masked layers can be animated. Now to see some of the parameters, what we're going to do is click onto our clip, open our inspector and go to effects. From here, you can see it says open effects and we have video collage. Now by default here, it says workflow. By default, it's create background. There's a create tab. I'm going to go over that later on in the video and why you should not use it. But for now, we're going to be going over create background. As you can see, it's followed by layout. You have columns, rows, stagger horizontally, stagger vertically, rounding, margins and space. And I'm going to go through each and all of these. So essentially how this effect works is you have your main layer and you're basically tend to video collage, use this main layer as a background and then put footage or images in between these gaps. So how do we do that? The first thing we're going to need to do is fill these gaps with footage. So what do you do? You go to your media pool and you find footage to fill it. So I'm going to get this footage here and I'm going to get this footage here. It's important that you drag your video clips underneath the main layer, which has the effect on it. Because again, essentially it's like a mask. So how does this actually work? You can essentially see it's scaled across all four of our tiles, which is not what we want. So how do we fix this? What we're going to need to do is enable the transform controls by clicking onto this icon. Then we're going to go to our inspector and zoom out the video that we're selected on. And as you can see, we're scaling it down. The next thing you're going to need to do is move it within the tiles. So right now I'm moving it within this second tile here because I think it'll look good here. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the second clip that we have here. Select onto it. I'm going to zoom. I'm going to move on to the next tile. And as you can see, we now have it within our scene. So if I play it, you can see now we have this split screen effect. But we only have two videos at the moment instead of four. If you wanted four videos, you do the exact same thing. You go to your media pool. You'd find a clip that you want. You drag it underneath the main layer at the top. You'd scale it and then you just position it. But let's say, for example, that you only have two videos that you want to put side by side or split screen or maybe even one. What do you do? So essentially, I'm going to delete this video clip here. I'm going to go back to our main video clip, which has the effect on it. Navigate to inspector, go to effects. And here you can see it says layouts. Here is where you'd manipulate how many videos or columns that you'd want and essentially the basics of how you'd want it to look. So here we have columns and rows. I want it to be just two videos so I can adjust these two parameters. Now, depending on how you adjust these two parameters will depend on the look that you get. I'll explain. So if I do it so it's two columns and one row, you can see we have an extremely tall mask. So if I grab this image here and I scale it up, You can also see that it's going into the image on the right. I'll show you how to fix that very soon. But we're going to scale up the second image here. So as you can see, both of these videos are basically overlapping each other, which is not what we want. Fastest way I found to adjust this is to click onto your clip, go to the video tab in the inspector, go down to cropping and essentially just crop your image so it doesn't overlap. Just like that, you can see we have two videos in a split screen instead of four. But I know what you're thinking, okay, great, but what if I don't want it to look like this vertical? What if I want it to look more like rectangular, like the traditional 16 by nine or two, three, five aspect ratio of video? No problem. Select onto your main layer again, go back to the effects. And if you go down here, you can see it says margins and spacing. This is what we're gonna to need to manipulate if we want to adjust the look of our videos. So what do we do? So essentially what we're going to change is the left to right margins and the top to bottom margins. And I'll show you what this does. As I'm adjusting it, you can see that the mask is either expanding or reducing in size. So I'm going to leave the left and right margin all the way to zero. And I'm going to reduce the top, the top and bottom margin just down ever so slightly. And as you can see, we're now getting a look which is more traditional to what video aspect ratio is. So now you can see our images are way too big. So what do we do? Click onto our individual videos. 
And again, enable the transform tool. Just scale it down. I'm going to undo the crop that I've done. And I'm just going to position this clip. I'm going to do the exact same for the other clip. I'm going to reposition it. And as you can see, just like that, we have a version of split screen. Now there's several variations you can do with this because there's other parameters that we haven't gone over. So if I go back to the main clip and we go to effects, you can see we have rounding. And what rounding does is it changes the mask into a circle mask. So if I adjust this parameter, you can see we're basically rounding off the corners. So if you didn't want to have a sharp rectangle look, you can round off the corners like this. Or if you keep going, you can essentially have a circular mask. And then if you wanted to adjust the transform position, the video accordingly, which is interesting. So we have this, which is really good. And what's also great is next to the effects of all of the parameters that we're changing, you can see it has this diamond. Now this diamond is for keyframes. Essentially what keyframes do is it tells a system at this point in time, we want this to happen or this to happen. So for example, if we go to the beginning of our clip and we start without rounding and we enable a keyframe, we can move forward in our clip and change the rounding all the way to one. And basically, as you can see, it's changed orange. We've essentially told our system at the beginning of the clip, start without any rounding corners. But at this point in time, we have enabled this keyframe, change the value to one and adjust the parameters so it animates. So if all of these features on the right hand side, when you see this diamond icon, it essentially means you can keyframe and animate that parameter and property. But you do not need to worry because there are actually presets in which DaVinci Resolves animates a lot of these parameters for you. And it's super simple, super easy. If like me, you're quite lazy or rather efficient and you'd much prefer DaVinci Resolve to do all this for you. Stay tuned because I'm about to show you exactly how you can do it and it looks incredible. So I'm just going to get rid of the keyframes. We're going to continue going down. You can see in margins and spacing, we also have horizontal and vertical offset. So by adjusting the horizontal offset, you can see that you can see that we're moving the image left and right. And if I adjust the vertical, we're moving up and down. This is a similar story with stagger horizontal and stagger vertically. If I adjust the stagger vertically, you can see that the masks are moving and we get more of a stylistic look. So again, what I do is I'll click onto our video clip and I just move it into position. And I'll do the exact same thing here. And now we have more of a stylized look. Instead of it being side by side, the offset to the center. Next, we have synchronized keyframing. Essentially what this will do, will offset any parameters that you've keyframed here, but we're not gonna get into that in this video. So the next tab you can see is tiles and this is next to the global adjustment. So if I click onto that, you'll see that the whole parameters of what we have changed. So this tile tab essentially enables you to adjust the styling, look and animations of your tiles as a whole or individual and separate tiles. So I'll explain. If we go down to custom size and shape, you can see if we enable custom size and shape, we can adjust the parameters of just one mask. So for example, if I wanted to make it smaller or if I wanted just this mask to be round, I can. I know what you're thinking. Okay, well, if we wanted to do the same, but with the other tile, what do we do? We'd go to manage tiles we change the active tile from one to two and again if i enable custom size and shape and i adjust the custom rounding you can see it's affecting just that tile so if you wanted to adjust individual parameters of say just one, one specific tile you would come into this tile function here and specify which tile you would want to affect the next parameters we have down here are in tile styling if you wanted to apply a border to both tiles you can do that by enabling apply to all tiles if I drag this up, you can see it's increasing the size of the border. If I drag it down, it's cutting into our image and also giving a border. The tile color will enable you to change the color of the tile that you want. And the opacity will show how visible the tile border actually is. Again, if you wanted to adjust this individually, you take off, apply to all tiles, and you just adjust the parameters for the specific tile that you'd want. And if you'd like to change the other one, go to manage tiles, select the active tile that you want, tile two, and just change the parameters for that tile also. I will disable that for now. Next, we have the drop shadow. This is pretty self-explanatory, but it enables you to have a kind of stylized drop shadow for your images. And again, if you disable the apply to all tiles, you can adjust these parameters individually for each individual tile. Now, this is what I know most of you are interested in, and this is the tile animations. So essentially, I'm going to leave apply to all tiles because I want them both to animate at the same time. You can see we have different parameters here. We have animate, fly animation, shrink animation, fly progress, shrink progress, rotation progress, fade progress. Essentially how this works, you can either animate these parameters individually or 
you can let DaVinci Resolve do it for you. So that's exactly what I'm going to do because I found that to give the best results. So if you click intro only, it will only animate the introduction. If you click outro only, it will do the exact same thing, but only for the outro, it won't animate the dials in. So what we're going to do is intro and outro because we'd want the animation of the tiles to start when the clip starts and also when the clip ends. As you can see, the clip ends quite abruptly. So to fix this, what you would do is you'd extend the end of the clip. You'd make a cut and you just delete the video effect. So now if I play this back, you can see that the tiles will animate in and out. After the tiles have animated out, we still have the original video playing. Okay. Now back to the animations. And again, I'm clicking onto my main clip. We're going back to tile animation animations. Here it has tick marks between fly, shrink, rotate, and fade. Essentially how this works is any parameter that you put a tick to will animate the mask in that specific way. So if I tick, for example, just fly, you can see that the split screen effect will fly into our image, like so. If I enable just shrink, you can see that the mask is gonna shrink in. Now you can actually enable multiple at once. If I enable all three, you can see that it's going to do all three. It's going to fly, shrink and rotate. The only ones I find to be acceptable are shrink and rotate. So I'm going to enable shrink. As you can see, this is the animation that we have. This is not the only animation included. Here you can see it says fly animation and shrink animation. This will essentially give you the ability to customize how you want this to be animated. So for now, I'm going to do animate width. If I go back to the beginning, you can see it animates the width opening and closing. And if I change the animation from width to height, it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to animate with the height, like so. So you can not only do this with the shrink animation, but you also have controls with the fly animation. So if I disable shrink, I enable fly. The default is fly right, but you could also Fly left, fly up, and fly down. So if I go to fly up, it will do that. And if I go to the end, it will fly back up again. As mentioned earlier, you can enable multiple parameters to get different effects. If we enable shrink and rotate, we get this, which is pretty interesting. Underneath here, it says duration. Now this is the duration of the animation, how long you want it to be. And by default, it's in frames and not seconds. This is important. This is in frames. The default duration is 60. I personally think this might be a little bit too long. So I'm going to change this to 15 and see how it looks. To me, that's a bit better. I don't like the rotate. So I'm going to keep the shrink and see how that looks. Perfect. Just like that, we have the animation. And again, this will work no matter how many clips you have. So if, for example, you had four videos, three videos, six videos, they will all animate with this effect. Now, like the rest of the effects above, you can apply this to all tiles, or if you disable it, it can only apply to one at a time. So if you wanted, for example, tile two to animate like this, but tile one to have a rotate, you can do that. But for continuity, I think it'll be best if they both animate the exact same. So I'm going to leave it like that. Next, you have the easing and blurring out of the titles. So this tab here, you can adjust the curves of how the animation will ease in and out. You can either have it linear, in, out, in and out, and the exact same thing for the animation effect ease. Now, if you personally know about keyframing and animations, these times won't be new to you. But if you don't, have no worries. I'm going to have a separate video all about that very soon. But if not, for now, I'll just say leave these parameters as is. Lastly, you see it says motion blur. This will enable motion blur onto our clips. If I play it back, you can see that we have motion blur and the higher you put this slider, the more motion blur gets introduced into the effect and animation. So that is a quick and brief overview of how this video collage works with the create background function workflow. Next, we're going to go over the create tile function and why I think it is not viable whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this effect I'm going to go back to my effects library. I'm going to drag the video collage effect back on. Now, in a workflow, I'm going to change it from create background to create tile. Now, this workflow is, is extremely counterintuitive. How it works is as follows. If I grab another clip and I drag it into our video, in order to get the exact same effect that I had before, you'd need to go into an effects again, drag another video collage over the second clip, go back to our effects, change to create tile, go to our tiles on the right-hand side and change the active tile to two. And then you need to do this the exact same way for all of the different clips that you bring in. So if I bring in this clip, 
drag the video collage effect, go to effects, create tile, go to tiles, change active tile to three. And then if I want to do one more, drag the video clip in, video collage, effects, workflow, create tile, tiles, active tile, four. And this is essentially how we have the effects. Now the biggest problem with this is one, not only is it time consuming, but two, if you wanted to adjust all of the parameters at the same time, you are unable to do so. If for example, I adjust rounding, you can see it's only affecting one tile at a time, which may be what you want. If you wanted to uniformly adjust them, it's not possible to do that in this current mode. Whereas before with the make background, you have that option. Also, if I'd like to animate all of the parameters tiles at the same time, it's not possible for me to do so. If for example, I click apply to all tiles, animate in an outro and I want to do fly right. If I play it back, you can see it's only affecting one clip. But the reason why this is great is because if you wanted to have two different animations, all you need to do is do the exact same process. I'm going to animate in and out. I'm going to fly from up this time. And if I play it back, you can see that these two are animated. In fact, I'm going to disable these two bottom clips. And you can see we have this, which is not bad. So the create tile workflow essentially enables you to do per clip adjustments without any global controls. Now, the reason why I said it may be inefficient, and ineffective is because you can do the exact same thing with the create background workflow, but also have the parameters of adjusting individual tiles. And there's also another secret effects that DaVinci Resolve has to do this process much faster. If I drag this clip into our timeline, you can see we have it here. And I go to our effects library. If I go down to effects, you can see here we have something called DVE. If I drag DVE over our video, you can see straight away it's created a tile and a border. If I grab another video clip and I drag the exact same effect over, again it's created a tile and a border. If I go to effects, you can see that I can change the position of this tile. And just like that, in a couple of minutes, I have two tiles which I can adjust the positioning of any time I want. Not only this, but I can also adjust the parameters such as rotation. We can have funny effects like this. And if we wanted to, we can enable keyframes and animate this. So if you wanted just a tile with a background, I personally believe that DVE is the fastest way to do it. But if you wanted the split screen slash video collage effect with multiple controls, global controls, as well as controls for individual parameters, I do believe that the video collage feature with the create background is the best way to go. All right guys, so this video is getting way too long. I'm probably going to do a part two to this video talking about keyframe parameters, how you can save out your effects and different presets for this, and also how you work with backgrounds and images to this effect also. If you like this video, please share, subscribe, comment, and like. It was quite long-winded, so if you made it to the end, congratulations, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.